G'day and welcome to the show. This week we flow through the border towns of Echuca and Moama. Now there's no doubt that all the rivers run, but none of them run quite like the Monty Murray. Very profound, Macca. Once again, we have got a list of things to do, which may even include a watering hole and a holiday park that just needs to be seen to be believed. So step on board. And we'll show you... What's, what's up, down under? It's time to see this land. This land of wonder. It's time to go and see what's up down under. What's up down under? You may remember weeks ago we began our Murray River adventure from its mouth in Goolwa, right up through to Lake Bonnie, and last week we started the Victorian leg of the journey at Swan Hill. This week we're off to Echuca Moama. After a very pleasant drive, we arrived in Echuca where we stayed at the Marool on the Murray. And I was lucky enough to catch up with the owner, April. So April, you're telling me that this is literally the backyard for most of your guests. Yeah, so we've got uh, 140 cabins that have this view of the Murray. Um, and fortunately I do too. So. <laughs> So you live where you work, it's that good, isn't it? Yeah, well, we, um, we call the park our backyard um, and every guest that we invite to the park, we, we treat them as if, you know, they're our friends and family and they are coming into our family owned and operated park. It's really mm -hmm. special to us. Now, the park has all the features that you would expect from a family park. It's got all of those amenities, yes. all of those facilities. But there are a few things that stand out that are unique to this place and that's what we want to know. Tell us yeah. about them. Uh, so we've got our theme village. Um, they're all different configurations. So we've got 11 what we call pioneer cabins, which are your two bedroom, two bathroom. We've got some studio cabins. We've also got the settlers cabins, obviously set in the theme of the pioneer settlement, which my father-in-law loved so much when he went to Swan Hill, um, brought it over here. Um, and the Sovereign Hill sort of theme, people who are traveling on the water often think that they are shops. Um, and we'll come up to the park and say, can we go to the bakery? Is it open? And we say that it's actually a cabin, so. I love it. April, we're on a little bit of an ever-changing backdrop here because we're standing on just another offering that you have here at the park. What's this? So this is our Barbie boat. So it's great for cruising the river, great for fishing off the back. Um, we, we can take guests on tours around the park, um, show them, we've got, like I said, the 2K is a riverfront. It's really great to see it from the water. Um, we can head up to the port, we can yeah, head out anywhere really. Um, so if guests want to experience the Murray and they don't have a boat, which some of our guests don't, um, they can still experience that. If you want to find out more about Marool on the Murray or any family park in Australia and New Zealand, log on to familyparks.com.au. A real attraction at Echuca is the Holden Museum. Wow, do I remember some of these beauties. Ted, how long has the National Motor Museum for Holdens been your baby? Been for the last 22 years. Wow. How many cars are here? There is a truckload. Yeah, there's 45 here, and that makes this the, the largest Holden display in Australia. And what age range do they vary from? Yeah, we go from 1948, which is the first Holden, yeah. right through to uh, a Commodore uh, Monaro, year 2000. What sort of um, experience can the people at home get when they come here? Well, apart from admiring a, a, a lovely Holden, it's a, a memory lane walk. What we do, we can take you back to 1948 with a lot of these cars. Uh, uh, the ladies got married in them, courted in them, their dad had them, got their licence in them. Did they get courted in the Sandman? Is that when they would have got courted in the Sandman? Uh, probably quite often in the Sandman. <laughs> And there's also some pretty rare ones. I've seen a few convertibles that I've never seen before. So there's some real unique things, isn't there? Yeah, we have. We have a VL convertible. It was done by the apprentices at Holden and many years ago with a little uh, VN there done by HSV. We've got some mock-up cars that no one's ever seen that come out of Holden. Before anyone at home asks, tell them they're not for sale. No, they're not for sale. Uh, I figured if we sold them, we wouldn't have a museum. Right. But uh, that doesn't stop people, of course asking every day of the week uh, what you've got in here for sale. They, they come out every day. Sure, I understand they're not for sale, but just come with me. There's one around here that I want to talk to you about. I've got a bit of pocket money and... Uh... The cars that are on display here are all on rotation. So what you see here today may not necessarily be here in a year's time. In fact, there's a 12-month waiting list just to put your car here on show. And that is if it's good enough. Check out the Holder Museum on their website. 
Stick around. After the break, the Murray sends us on yet another adventure. If you haven't already entered the Cub Campus competition, you better do it now. Your chance to win this brand new Brumby from Cub Campus. Valued at over $28,000. Featuring independent suspension, electric brakes, fridge box, stainless steel kitchen, and a whole lot more. The Brumby Camper Trailer is Australian designed and made with Australian steel. And Australian canvas, I'm feeling Australian. And there's nothing more Australian than a bonus prize drawn each month. So Chemec is throwing in the Chemec RV Media Package worth more than $1,100. There's even more chances to win. There's a $2,000 Chemec gift voucher and 10 $250 gift vouchers from Discovery Holiday Parks. And you can enter every day of the competition, so simply log on to whatsupdownunder.com.au and follow the prompts. Subscribe to the What's Up Down Under magazine and you'll still receive 100 bonus entries to the competition. So if you're feeling Australian like me, get your entries in now because the Cub Campus competition ends soon. Nissan, supporting What's Up Down Under and this journey. To see their latest models, visit your local Nissan dealer today or go online and log on to nissan.com.au. Echuca came to fame as a major trade and regional centre with its massive port of Echuca. If you can, check out the interactive discovery centre. Fairly new facility here and it looks fantastic from the front, but what is there to explore here? The biggest draw card, I would say, is the historic wharf. Now, that takes you back to an era gone by. It's uh, been meticulously restored and you can explore the rustic beauty uh, from above and below the wharf here. So how long ago did, was it restored? It's finished its restoration within the last two years and the Port of Echuca Discovery Centre has now been operating, incorporating the Discovery Centre and the wharf for 18 months now. So what inspired this whole facility and, and its restoration? The Port of Echuca and the historic wharf is uh, being heritage listed. There is a lot of rich history um, and it goes back to the river pioneers, days of early settlement. We have a paddle steamer here that is the oldest wooden hold paddle steamer still operating in the world. So there is so much rich history to the area that um, we need to preserve and tell the story to generations and generations to come. So to come here and see everything operating as it was 150 years ago is one thing that's great to see. The second, from an old chippy's point of view, to have a look at the restoration work that's going on here, the skills, the workmanship, and the things that are disappearing out of our life today is great. Of course, you can't beat experience, and this bloke just oozed it. Kev, what's your job here, mate? Oh, oh, now it's just mill engine driving here to look after the steam display, talk to the people. How long have you worked here? Oh, I come here in March 1974 to fix up a paddle steamer and haven't gone home yet. There's about another four more for to repair. You must be slow at fixing up paddle steamers if it's taken all that long and you still haven't finished. No, I've always got something to do there. <laughs> as soon as he gets up and done, there's someone else comes along and needs a bit of attention. So how old and how far gone are those boats before you say, I can't put them back together? Oh, they're never too far gone. Aren't they? As long as you've got one bolt, you reckon you can yeah. make a boat. What about working next to this river, the Murray? Oh, it's great, that? yeah, just watch the river go by, watch people go by and everyone enjoy themselves. That's why it's taking you so long to fix that bloody boat, mate. You keep looking at the people in the river. Oh, you're not only fixing the boat, you're driving one, doing the other repairs and talking to people. And Where would you rather be? Here. Here. Mm. And why wouldn't you be? Have a go at the place. Check out the Port of Echuca Discovery Centre website before you visit. There's a lot to see. I'd been looking everywhere for the boys, and where do I find them? <laughs> at the Great Aussie Beer Shed. And he goes, well, but it's OK in Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Drinking on the job, are we, boys? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. I wouldn't say oh. that at all. Let me guess, you're here for the history. Same reason we buy the magazines, and my half for the articles. Exactly. Neil, can you prove it to her, please? Well, we're going to show you our museum. Yes. Righto, let's do it. Well, I think it's the beer shed. You better have a beer, too. Well, Lead the way, Macca. When in Rome. Well, it's huge. It's 5,000 square feet, purposely built as a museum. All my own personal collection. It's just over 40 years of collecting. There's 17,000 
empty beer cans more in the world. Fairly obviously drank them. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then everything else in this museum is Aussie. We're proud to be Aussies. It doesn't matter if it's the old washing machines, the stoves, um, the uh, everything. It's all Aussie. Wow, this is incredible. It really is more than a museum. It's a history lesson, isn't it? It is. Well, maybe I'll just leave you to have a look around and we'll catch you Love later. Love to. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Wow. Told you we've been working. And the boys were right. They had been doing their homework. Have a look at this. Tenants Lager from Scotland came up with a range of lovely lady beer cans dating back from the 1960s all the way through to the 1990s. Now I have a personal favourite here. Her name is Angela and she knows how to strike a pose. Neil, you've heard it before but you've got quite a shed here. It's a huge shed. Isn't it? Yeah. What was the inspiration mate? Well I've been collecting for 40 years. It started off collecting beer cans and then uh, I just had a dream 20 years ago I'd like to do a museum and I thought it was just beer that would be not interesting to the average person so I started to collect Australian stuff and that just leaves it open-ended and um, we've just gone berserk and in the last six years we've actually built a farming museum as well so we're now known as the Great Aussie Beer Shed and Heritage Farm Museum. Wow. We've got a blacksmith's workshop, shearing shed, milking shed, saddlery, an old kitchen and nearly every furphy water cart ever made. So do you wear all those hats? Are you, are you blacksmithing? Are you then pouring the beers or what's going oh, on? I like drinking the beers and pouring the beers, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm a city boy come to the country, so no, I'm not a blacksmith, no. You've got some relics that date back a bit. What's the oldest piece you have in here? Uh, the box on the ground over here, which is a strong box from a Covent Co coach for the gold. Wow. There's one exactly the same in Sovereign Hill in Ballarat. I've also just recently bought a uh, toilet lock and it says pennies only and it's from the Flinders Street railway station between 80 and 100 years ago and I get that many older people on tour who get excited and they say we remember that. I remember the day that I didn't have a penny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks now. Thanks, mate. See ya you, mate. <laughs> Alright, you guys weren't really drinking on the job. Oh, uh, we were. <laughs> How good is this job? After the break, more Murray magic. What's up down under? And this journey is made possible by the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of Victoria. To help organise your next holiday in Victoria, log on to their website at ciavic.com.au. Hold on, Colonel. I'll look after that. You, uh, better off he sticks to cooking the chicken. Better off he looks after cooking the chook, and I look after loading the car. Because what happens here is that much storage area in the back of here, and it's easy to get at. So everyone wants to throw everything in the back of the car rather than loading it where it should be. But all we're doing is overloading the back axle, underloading the front. We lose steering, we lose control, and we lose traction. We've got a mile of space here, but we also have a mile of gear. Let's spread it out, load it evenly, so that we're safe on the road. This travel tip was brought to you by Sunland Caravans, manufacturers of the mighty Patriot Off-Road. You know, the Murray is not just a wide rolling river, it has many tributaries and even runs into itself via the Edwards and Wakul rivers. Today we're here with Murray, who's lived and worked on these waterways all your life, Murray. What have we got here? This here is a map of the floodplain that started here at Bathara, right through to the end at the other end. It shows a pretty broad outlet of where the water actually goes. And so, the floodplain really is uh, its a big area. And when you see it on a map like that, the river is a very small part of, of, of what we uh, live in. The water that runs through here, where is it first collected? The Murray starts up in the mountains and it actually gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And when it comes down at the full end, this is what it looks like in the flood. And How important for you over your years of farming have these maps been to you? Uh, it's interesting for me as far as what happens when the flood goes through. And there's people that have bought places in there, so they ring up and they say, do you know where the water goes when the flood goes through? 
What were the main sources of industry around the water here? Uh, this area here uh, was rice, wheat, barley, uh, sheep, cattle, uh, you name it. Fair to say then that the Murray and its tributaries are serving uh, oh, a few masters, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a few masters for sure. And work just continued down the Murray with Caroline and the new Carra camper. Caroline, I couldn't help but have my eye caught by this caravan. I mean, it's unique and it's just so different to everything else that's out there. What inspired it? Well, it was actually a gentleman that designed it for himself to go caravanning. He was originally a boat builder and he did things by composite construction. So that's what we've got here. But he's taken all modern styling um, with the benefits then, of course, of fuel consumption reduced because it's lightweight and it's small enough to have two people but a bathroom as well. Nice. So what other features are there? Well, as standard, it comes with air conditioning, rear awning, microwave, um, you've got a three burner stove, um, the full uh, bathroom includes the shower and toilet. If you wish to customise it, you certainly can. Yeah, because one thing doesn't suit everyone, does it? That's right. We're all individuals, uh, but we like to think we've included the main things that most people will want. Where's the Carra Camper manufactured? Uh, it's all designed and manufactured right here in Victoria, in Melbourne. So. Nice. Keep it local, keep it here. That's right. A bit of peace of mind for everyone too, isn't it? Yeah, you're allowed to come down and see how we do it. Awesome. And if you'd like to find out any more information on this fantastic product or any other products of the members of the Victorian Caravan Industry Association, just go to the website, gomakesomememories.com.au. After the break, we take you around Cape Horn. There's a lot to see and do along the mighty Murray River, both in Victoria and New South Wales. Log on to their website at visitthemurray.com.au. Lagoon Caravans have been manufacturing custom-built caravans for over 10 years. Their experienced team builds the feeling of comfort and stability in every van to make your travels a dream. To watch a full video on Lagoon Caravans, log on to lagooncaravans.com.au. Here's a great limited time offer brought to you by Murray Regional Tourism. Enjoy two nights at the Marool on the Murray in this riverfront pioneer cabin for just $359. You also get admission to the Port of Echuca Discovery Centre, the National Holden Museum and a guided tour of the great Aussie beer shed and a one hour paddle steamer cruise with Murray River Paddle Steamers. To book this limited offer or for more information on other great deals along the Murray, log on to Visit themurray.com.au forward slash spring deals and follow the links. Are you a Travel Saver Card member? There's never been a better time with over 5,000 discounts in Australia and New Zealand. You can now save at over 100 holiday parks, but the savings just got better. With the What's Up Down Under Travel Saver Card, you can now get a 25% discount on a Family Parks two-year membership, allowing you to save at 120 parks in both Australia and New Zealand. That's over 200 holiday parks. See the What's Up Down Under website for further details. There is a lot that is unique about Cape Horn Vineyards. It's location number one. It sits right on the banks of the Murray, which means it has its own little microclimate. It's cool in summer and it doesn't get too cold in winter, meaning they can grow some pretty special varieties. I'm loving the Cabernet. But right now, I think I can smell a pizza. Ian, Cape Horn Vineyard. Now we're driving through the forest and thinking, where are we going on these dirt roads? What a find. At the end of a dirt road is this magnificent place. Where did you come up with the name Cape Horn? Well, the name was uh, already here. It was um, the name of the property, which comes from the shape of the river, which is the same shape as uh, the river in South America. And uh, the vineyard was planted in the 1850s then. Uh, around the same time. And that was pulled out in 1950 and uh, I replanted the grapes in 93. So everything I've tried is magnificent. <laughs> Got the Cabernet here. Yes. What other varieties do you have? We, we have a Shiraz mm. and a Duriff and a Cabernet, all red grapes which are like a warmer climate. And then we also grow a Marsan, which is again a warmer climate white and the Chardonnay, which you can grow basically anywhere. 
So people can come here on a boat, they can even come on the MLU, can't they, on the paddle steamer? Yep, the paddle steamer is uh, regularly, the MLU comes up on its way to Barmer, it stops here overnight and we do wine tastings. And uh, occasionally the other paddle steamers come up for other events. And I've heard your wood fire pizzas are pretty good too, Ian. You're whipping me up one there? I am whipping you one up now. It's a nice pepperoni. Fantastic. I'm sure it's going to taste amazing with this red wine. Cheers. Cheers. How was your Cape Horn experience? <laughs> I am in love with this place. I've decided I'm moving in. Ian's given me the okay. That's good. <laughs> it's a little oasis, isn't it? It feels like you're in the middle of nowhere, but you're only 15 k's out of a chuka. Absolutely right. The wines are absolutely amazing. The staff are a wealth of knowledge, and the food looks like it's to die for. You can have your own Cape Horn experience by visiting their website, capehornvineyard.com.au. Cheers. Cheers. Gentlemen before ladies. <sighs> Why, thank you. I saw one over here. <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of another great episode, team. I've had the best BBHH experience ever. OMG, BBHH. Beers, boats, hospitality and history. Makes sense. <laughs> it does. But stay tuned, people. Next week, we're going to take you up to Daniloquin, home of the Danny U Master. The D-U-M. Oh, dear. Look, look forward to seeing you again next time. And we can keep showing you what's, what's up, up down, down under. under. What's up, down under?